So we're going to start with fall 2006. And many of you might remember when I was turning 42. And do you remember what I said? I'm turning 42. I'm the answer to everything. Mm -hmm. For those of you who read sci-fi, you know that's a Douglas Adams quote, right? That 42 is the answer to the life, the universe, and everything. You might not have known that, but Douglas Adams knew that. And so uh, what he had said, though, was that once they had created, it took them 7 million years to figure out that 42 was the answer. But they actually didn't know what the question was. <laughs> and that was going to take another 10 million and more computers. Uh, and right before they actually figured out what the ultimate question was, uh, the world blew up. So, you never got the ultimate question, but the answer was 42. And so I went around saying, oh, I'm the answer to everything. I'm 42. It must mean I know everything. <laughs> Anyone heard of hubris? <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes, very much. So, so you know. You know what I'm talking about exactly. Yes, totally. So 42 hit and... Yeah, I don't know nothing. That's what I've, I've figured out <laughs> since then. I know nothing. I was silly for even saying, I know everything. I'm the answer to everything. But that started off 42 in October of 06. Uh, two weeks later, Mike lost his job. And so that started everything. And, you know, I... I I like Mike's job. I like Mike making money. <laughs> it was really hard when he lost his job because he'd never done that before. So it was really a shock, right? But then he got a job because he's wonderful and who wouldn't want to hire him? And, and uh, so it was all great. But in the meantime, I went to get my mammogram, my annual thing. And, and honestly, I was going to skip it this year, that year, because, you know, they all were normal. I don't have a history of breast cancer. Why bother going? But I went. Um, Winter solstice, and they called back and said, gee, we found a little spot on your mammogram. It's microcalcification. I'm like, oh, really? Microcalcification? I've never heard of such a thing. <laughs> uh, so, of course, I'm looking online, and apparently it's very common. 80% of people who have microcalcification, it's nothing. Yeah. It's nothing. Oh, it's nothing. Oh, crap, I have cancer. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Mike's calling me a pessimist. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a year-long debate over whether I was a pessimist or not. <laughs> but considering I was right, I don't think I really could be called a pessimist. <laughs> Is that like that paranoid? Or paranoid, yeah. <laughs> it's not paranoid if they really are out to get you. <laughs> so... So I go back and they do another mammogram, which you all know, all the women here know what a mammogram is. Yeah. And you, you know the, the, what you have to work on to get there, right? And you know what they're going to do to you, and you're like, okay, this is all for the good. Okay. <laughs> I'm not lying, am I right? Have you ever looked ahead this way to look down, though? Have you ever, I go, oh my god! I was like, I was like Yes. Yeah, it's like an oil spill or something. <laughs> it's not pretty. Uh, uh, it really, it isn't. It's like the least attractive way. And the texts are all very nice, though. I mean, the, thing is, the texts are all very nice, and it was all good. And they were nice enough to say that, that they would look at it there. I didn't have to go anywhere. And the radiologist would come in and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, okay. Mike, I think you were with me, yes, for this one, because he was not working, so I made him drive me everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I saw driving Miss Daisy a few too many times. <laughs> Mike, drive me to the hospital. Mike, drive me to the, you know, so. Uh, so the radiologist comes in. It's like, well, it's in, it's in between. It's, it's undecided. Now, you know I'm a Libra. So, of course, my breasts were undecided, too. <laughs> Which meant that they wanted to do a biopsy, because it wasn't so noticeable that they said, oh, crap, you have cancer, but it wasn't so innocuous. Apparently, there are patterns, like tea leaves, you know, certain combinations, <laughs> okay. right? We'll say one thing or the other. Hey, I'm lucky. I'm lucky that it's like that, because they could read these things. And so, of course, I'm online calling up, okay, now, is it this? Or is it this? What about the architectural distortion? <laughs> I know words. <laughs> and, and you know what? They pulled up the report and told me. And I could understand it, so it was all good. And it's okay, so for a biopsy. So for three weeks, I was waiting for the biopsy, and that was hard. I did tell a lot of people that I was doing this uh, because I just, let's wait, let's wait. But I knew, and those who knew me knew I was saying things like, I've just had that kind of year, it's going to be cancer. It's just my bad, that is just not over yet. It's not over with. So it's going to be cancer. And so I went in for the, um, the biopsy. Now, a marvel of medical technology, the biopsy machine. <laughs> okay, so picture, it's an altar. 
<laughs> about six feet off the ground. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> machinery underneath. Now, what they don't tell you is, you know what part of that machinery is? It's a mammogram. What? <laughs> under the now, now think about this. If the mammogram is under the table, how do you get to it? Well, if you lay on the table and there's this big hole, and I'm not kidding, it's about this big, and they really only want the one breast to go through, not both. So that was the first thing. Was like, you over here? You hang down. Yeah. Yeah. Now you think I am actually not even exaggerating this. They were very nice people. This was St. Vincent's and they were wonderful, but really. So I have to get a step stool to climb up onto the altar and I have to arrange myself. And they're like, and you need to hold that for 25 minutes. I don't think you people understand that I am claustrophobic. I don't like to be tied down. I don't like to, I've had panic attacks over that, and you want me to hold a position. <laughs> 20 minutes. We have pillows. <laughs> and they did. We can give you as many pillows as we can. So they propped me up. I had foam, I had pillows, and how's your neck? How's your neck? How's your neck? And so I'm up there. And the thing is, too, is that the hole is in the middle of the table. It's not slided one side or the other, which they could have done. Right? right? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. But it's right in the middle. And it's a hard metal, to a hard plastic table. So the edges are hard. So imagine hard plastic pushing into oh, you for about wow. 20 minutes as well. And they don't really want anything in the field. So you can't get, you got to watch how close the pillows get and all of that. And then they had me face away. So I'm sitting there in this table, <laughs> a beautiful floral print. <laughs> well, all these people are over here. I cannot see any of them. I have no idea who was in the room. I don't know who was taking pictures. <laughs> I don't know who was touching me. Uh, I was just like this. Uh, no, and I'll tell you why. So this is what, so, and the nurse was great. She was like, okay, this is what's gonna happen. Okay, we're gonna get the mammogram. So what, the, what they did is they put it in a mammogram vise. So, you know, it's the two glass plates, right? That, you know, it's to hold it still. And this is what she said. And of course, I'm like. That's gonna hurt. <laughs> and she says, well, but eventually it goes numb. <laughs> and I'm like, that's all better. I'm not sure if that's better. That it hurts so much it's numb now. <laughs> but you know what? She was right, it did. <laughs> and so they do that, it's to hold it still, and then they take the mammogram picture, they find where they're gonna do it, and they have what's it's a called <laughs> needle biopsy. So it's computer generated. So the computer's over there and they're figuring out the right course. Now I don't know where it, all the needles, like I said, I can't see anything. Right. Um, I'm just trapped. <laughs> and, and there's like, okay, so now I just want you to know. You're going to hear a loud clapping sound. <laughs> I'm telling you this so that you don't startle. I can't imagine jumping would be a really bad thing. And they, they give you the, the warning they always give people, and then we'll have to do it again. <laughs> I'm standing still. I'm not doing anything. Okay, loud clapping sound. That's nice, isn't it? Right? She's telling me all these things, right? And you know, so they're doing this, figuring out where it is, the mammogram picture, and all of that. Okay. <laughs> there was something she forgot to tell me. <laughs> Anyone get their ears pierced with an ear piercing gun? Ouch. Yes. <laughs> yes. No. Okay. Ouch. Those of you who've had your ears pierced with an ear piercing gun, the sound, right? Right? What else goes with the sound? <laughs> the, pain, <laughs> the pain. The overwhelming pain. She forgot to mention that part. You know, because it sounded like that. It sounded like an ear piercing gun. So I, I had my breast pierced, basically. <laughs> And they got it, and it was all good, because they would have had to go back again. So they, oh. they take the sample, keep it in the vise. Uh, so they would make sure there's cells in there. Did you take any value on that? Um, Seriously. I had a little something, and that was good. And let me tell you, whenever they offer, say yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, whenever they offer, say yes. Don't tough this one out. Yeah. And so I'm thinking, oh my god, that hurt! But they got it, and it was good, and then they released the vice, and then she packed it. Okay, okay, what do you do with wounds? Pressure! <laughs> I mean, it's just like it leveraged. <laughs> okay, that was kind of worse than I thought it was going to be. And so then a couple of ice packs and a ace bandage and everything, and off I went home. 